two. Are you ready for me to release him? Should I release him to you? With Jesus joy, please celebrate the gift of God in the house. Apostle Joshua Selma. As he comes. Ma pollution. I think you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is truly a winning church. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Pastor, thank you again. And your dear wife. My goodness. I was so blessed listening to Pastor Godman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. My prayer is that after this conference, if I were you, I'll get some of these teachings and listen again. Again. There is something you will hear then that you did not hear now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to speak to us yet again. We honor you and we thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and even understanding unto the simple. Speak to our hearts, grant us wisdom, expand our capacities tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God bless you again. Um, I just want to take it from where Pastor Godman stopped. Incredible perspectives. And the truth is that um, you can speak from a standpoint of a theoretical understanding and then you can speak out of the abundance of your experience. When you hear a man who is speaking from a standpoint of conviction, the difference is very clear. We thank you and we honor you, sir. Thank you so very much. In Jesus' name. The School of Faith, part two. Yesterday, we began a discussion from part one. And I'll subtitle tonight's teaching, Obtaining Promises, Hebrews 11, 33. We took our time yesterday to challenge ourselves um, by redefining our understanding of faith. Hallelujah. If you recall yesterday, we said how that the Bible starts by defining faith for us. Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things and also the evidence of things. So the first definition of faith is in relation to things. But the second definition of faith that we did observe that not many believers pay attention to is found in verse 2. The Bible says that same faith is related to a good report. Hallelujah. And that the elders who the Bible says were fathers and heroes of faith, not all of them had the opportunity of obtaining promises. But the Bible says every one of them obtained a good report. And then I did tell us yesterday that faith, number one, is a platform that can help the believer obtain promises. But number two, that faith is also a school and a journey. Are we together? And that when the end of that journey is not something you receive, it's something you become. And that in God's priority, becoming is greater than receiving. Are we together? Yes. It is impossible to be bankrupt of certain spiritual provisions when you have become. So that many times in our faith walk, we, we gauge our progress or the presence of faith by checking whether we have been able to receive things. But I'm saying that in the economy of faith, sometimes you may not have anything present as at, uh, as at that point, but then your transformation is also proof that you have faith. Hallelujah. And that God is more interested in you becoming than in you receiving. Because your becoming will help you sustain whatever it is that you receive. It is possible to receive without becoming and then you will lose it. But when you become, in fact, Daniel 11, 32, the B part says, but the people that do know they are God, you notice the progression? It starts with knowledge, then it says they shall be 
then they shall do. They shall know that knowledge will cause them to be and then they shall do. Hallelujah. Before we see Jesus receiving anything, the Bible tells us that he grew, he increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. And what a very profound perspective that Pastor Godman brought this evening, how that life is in seasons, very, very powerful. You know, while I sat listening to him, my mind went to the dream of Pharaoh. Remember, Pharaoh had a dream and Joseph came to interpret that dream. And Joseph said, it's not about cows and it's not about farm products. It's about seasons. You have seen the same thing expressed in two ways. There will be seven seasons of abundance and then afterwards will be a season of famine and drought. This is established. It will not change. Hallelujah. In fact, I've preached a message on that called the law of seasons. So it's a very profound revelation. Um, how that seasons are part of God's design in the earth and that you must know when seasons come to an end and then know how to transit into prophetic seasons. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are many blessings in the life of the believer that are connected to seasons. When the prophet spoke to the woman, he said, according to the time of life. Amen. So Hebrews 11 and verse 33. Now we want to look at the other part of faith. The Bible says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, and then it says, obtained promises. So a man can use his faith to obtain promises. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. 6, 12 Hebrews. The Bible says to not be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience, it now says, inherit the promises. Hallelujah. I like the way scripture puts it. It says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Are we together? The Bible says, whereby are given to us these exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And I rounded up yesterday by telling us that it is important for us to obtain things. My teaching yesterday was not in any way pushing away the desire to reach, the desire to press, the desire to increase, to expand. In fact, one of the proof that God is with you and his hand is upon your life is that you never remain in the same position. The Bible says the path of the just is that, is that in your Bible? It's as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And we did learn yesterday also that God is glorified in our results. John 15, 8. It says, herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear much fruit. And that your fruit should remain. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. We are his workmanship it says. Recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. So God is glorified in our lives to the degree to which our lives command results. It's important for us to establish this so that our hearts are prepared to be enlarged tonight in the name of Jesus. You believe that? The first miracle that was performed by Jesus according to John's synoptic account is found in John chapter 2. And when you read verse 11, the turning of water to wine, the Bible ends that story by saying, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him. Then you go to John chapter 20 and verse 30. The Bible now says there were many other miracles that Jesus did 
that were not captured in this book. It says, but these are written, 31 now, that ye might believe in Jesus as the Son of God and that in believing you might have life through his name. Hallelujah. So it's important for you to know that results matter in the kingdom. It's only that in order of divine priority, your encounters should be greater and richer than your results. But like you will be learning tonight, whether faith operates in your life as a journey or as a platform, the starting point of your journey will always be your encounter with God. So journey with me as we begin to explore faith as a platform for receiving. There are a few keys that the Bible leaves for us to as far as manifesting Bible faith is concerned. And I submit to you by the integrity of scripture that most believers do not understand the dynamics, the operation of faith. Most believers know instinctively and by listening to preachers that faith is a potent force that produces results. But the dynamics as to how faith, the faith that wins, how it works, many believers are at a loss. So if you sample an average believer and you ask the person, describe for me intelligently how Bible faith works. They will guess pieces of the principle. Some will say pray, others will say give, others will say speak the word. And these are all pieces of the truth. So imagine someone who wants to make a delicious meal and you ask them, how do you make say fried rice? or jollof rice and the person tells you I don't know but I know salt is part of the ingredient is right another person says I remember pepper another person says the rice itself another person may even recommend the the pot you know for cooking but all the pieces of ingredients themselves do not make what you are looking for so you can carry a bag of pepper and be angry that you are not making fried rice another person can even have a bag of rice and wonder why it's not tasting the way that of the chef tasted you must understand the system for combining it and this is my assignment tonight to show you through the lens of scripture how to make faith work hallelujah the bible tells us that this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith four times in scripture the bible says the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith so there are a few keys that i want to give us very quickly so that we walk with time because i hope that at the end of our discussion we'll have the opportunity to pray and i just speak over our lives number one the first key to manifesting bible faith according to scripture is a revelation of god's integrity and ability as simple as this sounds, please write and pay attention. A revelation of God's integrity and a revelation of his ability. You will never be able to manifest Bible faith until you know God and understand the extent of his integrity and the extent of his ability. These are two attributes of God that are responsible for planting conviction in the believer. The consciousness of his integrity and then his ability can make you a man of confidence and it is what is responsible for programming audacity in men. God is a God of integrity. God is a God of integrity. Numbers 23, 19. Very popular but profound scripture. 23, 19 numbers. Can we read it together? projected ready one to read it says God is not a man stop there please let me explain this do you know the meaning of this statement the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie that means men have a weakness they lie are we together now you know what it means to lie to lie does not just say it doesn't just mean to say something untrue. It's to say something you may not have the ability to bring to pass. Hallelujah now. That God is not a man. He became a man, but he's not a man. God is not a man that he should lie. That means this weakness that is in men, the inability to bring their word to pass, it is not in God. 
that before God utters any word, he vets whether he has the integrity and the ability to make that which he says come to pass. So God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Watch this. Had he said and shall he not do it? Had he spoken and shall he not make it good? Genesis 21, 1 and 2, a scripture that has ministered so deeply through the years. Genesis 21, 1 and 2. Here's what the Bible says. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said, the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Say integrity. The word integrity comes from the, the word integer. It means same within as without, void of falsehood. Are we together? So when we say an individual is a person of integrity, it then means that you are void of falsehood. You are original, you are authentic, worthy of trust. God is a God of integrity. Every time I teach about the integrity of God, I'm reminded about something that Africans celebrate a lot. We call it April Fool. Say it after me. April Fool. It's a way of playing pranks with your mind. I don't know if it happens by April or any other time. It's called April in the joke. But I just know that sometimes people stretch and make expensive jokes like a gift of a house has been given. And while the person is rejoicing, you now say April Fool. Are we together? People have collapsed because the jokes were taken too far. People have heard news that has depressed them even after they told them it were a lie. Hallelujah. Because there's a part of your mind that does not know the difference between reality and imagination. Once that thought is planted there, it will take God to help you. Are we together now? So, the Bible says God is not a man. That means every speaking of God you find in scripture, it's important for you to know that he's not playing games with you. Regardless how high, how wide, how beyond your imagination that statement is. For instance, Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2, the Bible says, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to do and to observe all that I command you this day, that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. How many nations? That was not a parable. It was a literal statement that a man can believe God and gain ascendance above every nation. It's a dimension of influence that is incontestable. And then that all these blessings shall come upon you. They shall overtake you if thou will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord. How about the scripture that says no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper? How about the, we, the, the scripture that says that you arise and shine for your light is come? Is God helping somebody already? And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I simply call them exceeding great and precious promises. A compendium of God's commitment to the believer. But you need to know the one who spoke before you know what he said. If you don't trust me, well, you cannot trust what I have said. Are we together? Your encounter with me is what gives you the fortitude to believe what I have said. God's integrity. God's integrity. God's integrity. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him because everyone who comes to God must come believing that number one, he is. The word he is means he exists. And then number two, he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God can be trusted. You need to tell yourself this tonight. God can be trusted. I can trust him with my life. I can trust him with my dreams. I can trust him with my pain. You've trusted people of lesser quality, lesser levels of integrity. It's time to give God a chance with your life. God can be trusted. He can be trusted with your ministry. He can be trusted with your finances, your children. Are we together? Bible faith is not built on blind believing out of nowhere. No, you don't just believe what he said. You first must believe who said it. 
and God the Bible is full of God's God's character scattered from Genesis to Revelation he gave you room to probe and vet his person and that if at the end of your search you find him wanting you have a right to reject him hmm. hallelujah his dealings with people from nation to nation, season to season, is there in scripture so that you will see and come to a personal conclusion that God can be trusted. I believe him. God can be trusted. Say integrity. One more time, say integrity. You read the Bible and you will see scary seasons like Pastor Godman taught us. Scary situations that people found themselves in and you would think they would never come out. The worst that I know according to scripture was the story of Job. I'm not aware of any man who had that kind of tragedy to that degree. In one day, you lose your estate, you lose your business, a mysterious demonic wind comes to wipe away your house and at the end of it, the Bible says, Job bowed himself and worshipped. And then as if that were not enough, boils and all kinds of infirmities just came out of his body to an extent that the wife looked at him and said, why do you still hold on to your integrity? He says, curse God and die. And Job said, all the days of my appointed time he said though he slay me yet will i trust him hmm. then i love genesis i love job 42 and verse 10 he says god turned the captivity of job you will think that part of the story should never come because of the extent of the tragedy god turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends then the bible says the lord gave job twice 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 all that he had twice hmm. hallelujah i believe god he can be trusted your situation is not the first mm -mm. you are not the first to go through that situation as emotionally connected as you are to that situation i can tell you the bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and is the thing that will happen under the sun there is nothing that is new a time came women ate their children. It's not become that bad in our economy. I want to tell you that everything that has, is happening now has its parallel in scripture. The things that were written aforetime, time, they are for our learning, the Bible says, so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Is someone learning? God's integrity, God can be trusted. Say God is not a man. Prophesy to your spirit, God is not a man that he should lie yes sir when god speaks it is because he intends to make it good in your life god does not play games with people if he tells you i will lift you it doesn't matter what situation what condition that leads to the second revelation of god that we must have his ability now you see without ability it is impossible to remain a person of integrity because integrity demands that you have the will and the resources to remain consistent i can intend to do good but not have the wherewithal to make it happen that will make my integrity questionable the issue is not the guile in my heart the issue is that i do not have the resources to remain consistent so the Bible says, Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him who is able to do, is someone learning faith, above, abundantly above all that we ask or think. The key expression there is the word able to do. Please say able to do. There are people who are able to say, but they are not able to do. There are people who are able to wish, but they are not able to say. The Bible is full of many people who were able to say, like the prophets of Baal in Mount Carmel, but they were not able to do. There have been gods and idols that were able to propose things they did not have the wherewithal to defend. Here comes the revelation that Pastor Godman again brought. The name El Shaddai is a very mysterious name. It literally means the multi-breasted one. It's an attempt to show the extent of his self-sufficiency that God lives in an economy where he does not outsource anything to support him. There is no human who lives in that kind of reality. We all have to depend 
on the external to support ourselves but that God exists in a reality the Bible says in the beginning God mysterious statement in the beginning not from the beginning in the beginning God the self-existent one God is all-powerful this is an attribute of God he did not share with man as much as we are powerful we are partakers of his divine nature he did not give us the privilege of omnipotence we are not all powerful no our authority and power is limited it has his jurisdiction and then its modus operandi but this God that we serve is all powerful convince yourself the Bible is full of the wonder working power it says I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belonged to God power belonged to God listen it takes power to bring things to pass are we together now yes more than desire so when God says I am lifting you number one he has the integrity number two he has the resources I like how the Bible puts it it summarizes God's resources on earth in a very fearful way Psalm 24 verse 1 the earth is the Lord's then number two its fullness thereof number three the walls and number four the inhabitants all they belong to him the person who owns the earth its resources and men is someone to be feared and worshipped because there are about 8 billion men on earth and he's called the father of spirits. You know what that means? He can manipulate any human spirit to work out his purposes. It is impossible for him to be stranded because someone of this 8 billion must be open to cooperate with him. If there were only two people, you might say, well, if one says no and the other says no, God might be stranded. Impossible. El Shaddai. So when you know him as the all-powerful God, you can dare things that does not make sense. And the basis of your confidence is the one who stands by you like a mighty, terrible one. Moses is afraid, having brought them out of Egypt. Now they are stranded. The Red Sea before them, the Egyptians fuming with boiling anger to come and return them back to yesterday. And Moses, you can imagine as a leader, having people with all kinds of things going on. The Bible says he calmed them down like any wise leader would do and then he rushed to God and said, what do I do? And the Lord said, why are you crying before me? He says, tell the people that they go forward. And then he spoke and stretched his rod. But when the psalmist was giving us perspective, he said, God breathe upon the sea. We did not see that recorded in Exodus, but that the, the sea did not just part hither and thither because of the rod. It was the breath. A man who can breathe and split the Red Sea left and right, and his breath will create a fence around and make dry ground. I hope you know that the Red Sea did not just part. The ground had to elevate to a position where they could walk through. Because if it part, you are intelligent enough, they will still fall and die. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babu Anika Maruka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babu Anika Maruka. The Almighty God. There are professors that will say, I have one like you. You are an authority. There are four of you on earth. There's one in Africa. There's one in this. There's one in that. There are even certain people who have the status of being first for a while. But there is one who is in a position where nobody, he's incontestable. He's not just the first, he's the only. Find a way of convincing yourself. Otherwise, you will fall like a pack of cards. Life has a way of bullying your conviction. When you see challenges, they stand as though they will never move. But there are times that you need to clear out of the way and let the one who backs you show how powerful he is. The confidence of the believer is predicated upon your understanding of who God is. His integrity. And you see, 
when you know this about God, you will not fear when he speaks to you because God speaks to men like he's speaking to himself. God will never tell you what you can do. He will tell you things only him can do. One of the ways you know you have heard God is that everything around you and your current level that heard him would not be able to bring that thing to pass. So when God is speaking to you, he will say, go and buy the land. I understand it is 10 billion naira. When you buy it, build an auditorium this way. And while he's talking, he will never mention provision. He will never mention trouble. He will talk as if the government will not harass you, as if Satan is not part of the discussion. And at the end of it, you will say, right. And that's it. God for you. Hmm. Hallelujah. Because you see, leaders in this end time need to be people of strength and understanding. Most times people lament and sympathize with themselves and, and command pity as though God decided to embarrass them and waste their lives. God never speaks to you as though it will be by your strength to make it happen. God has integrity, but my goodness, God has ability. If you doubt that God has ability, fill in the blank. Who turned a king to become an animal? for seven years with the brain of a human being to teach him that there is a God that rules over the affairs of men. Are we together now? The prophet came upon the strength of that God and said by this time tomorrow, you don't risk your ministry by making such a stupid statement. It's better to say those who want to believe, move this way and those who don't believe, that's all right. You don't come and risk yourself and the man who the king leaned upon said, ah, uh ah, -uh, what are you saying? Don't complicate these people's pain. And he said, really? Do you know the God that has sent me? You will see it as a witness that God does not lie, but you will not eat of it. I'm here to shake somebody's unbelief. God is trust, can be trusted. Are we together? Yeah. Mm. I don't like to give too much stories of myself, but my life is full of instances where God spoke things that at the time he said it, there was no human way you can stretch your imagination from border to border and know that there's no human way that will come to pass. One of the assignments of the spirit of faith is to remind you about God's ability. That's how God primes your faith. He begins to remind you every time you are in unbelief, God shakes away your unbelief by taking you through memory lane. He uses the word. He also uses your experience. That's the reason why you do not waste the dealings of God in your life. You archive them because they become the tools that build your faith for the next season. So a woman who, for instance, is wondering if her child has any glorious destiny in light of the kind of person he's becoming, then God reminds you, where is the God that gave you that child after five years of waiting? And they said you would not be able to get pregnant. And now, when, when that memory comes, it does something to you. Now your faith is alive. Bible faith is predicated upon a revelation of God's integrity and God's ability. Say God's ability. It is true. There are things that men can do. There are things that systems can do. But ladies and gentlemen, there are things that only God can do. An example, lifting men. Only God can lift men from a dunghill and place that individual in the place of grace. Another example, only God can give men rest. He says, come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I, not I and other people, not choose any of us, I will give you rest. A man can never enter his Sabbath if you do not trust the God who is able. Are we learning already? Number two, let me rush for the sake of time. So Bible faith is built on number one, the revelation of God's integrity, and God's ability. Number two, are you ready? The second key to manifesting Bible faith, faith that will grant you grace to audaciously 
produce extraordinary results, giant strides in life, and to obtain promises. Faith is very, very vision dependent. This is a part of faith that many people are not taught. Please write this down. The second key to manifesting Bible faith is vision. A clear picture of your desired expectation. There are many people who are hoping for things that have no form and shape in their minds. The second key to manifesting Bible faith is vision. Clearly defined expectations. Mark eleven twenty four, 24, please. Jesus is speaking and here's what he had to say. After he caused the fig tree, he used the situation to teach them a lesson on faith. Therefore, I say unto you that what things soever ye desire, can you see that there? That is a starting point. What things soever ye desire, you must give it form. You must give it description. It says, when ye pray. So you don't just pray blindly. There must be a form. There must be a frame. Something that defines your expectation. So you will know when it is answered. It is amazing how many believers cannot receive from God because there is no clearly defined expectation. So when they come, even to seek help from men of God, they say things like, my life is not moving forward. And you ask them, what exactly do you want? They say, it's a general problem. Every aspect of my life, and that kind of vagueness does not allow for the kind of breakthrough and specificity that you need. When Jesus was teaching to pray, he said, pray in this manner. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Are we together? Yes. And then he says, give us this day our daily bread. No vagueness, clear description. What is your daily bread? All that is required for your sufficiency and your excelling per day, per season. He said, give us. Don't assume when you ask. Isn't it amazing that when Jesus performed the miracles that he did, sometimes he met people who had obvious situations and you would think it was sarcastic that he was asking them, what would you want me to do? How do you see a blind man like Bartimeo and say, what should I do for you? It is a costly assumption to assume that the person wanted healing. Acts chapter 3, remember, the man was at gates beautiful. And you would think a man seeing such a powerful apostle passing. The Bible says he begged for arms. And when Peter and John said, silver and gold I do not have. I'm sure the man said, please go and pray. Go and pray and leave me in peace. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not leaving. There is something that I have that is more superior to what you need. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, rise up and walk. The man remained there. The Bible said it was Peter who held him. And lifted him by force. You must leave this place today. Are we together? Say vision. One more time say vision. There are pastors that have no vision. No clear expectation. The assignment of the word of God. Is that you can use the word of God. With the wisdom of an artist. You can use scripture literally. To paint your tomorrow. The spirit of wisdom, the creativity of the spirit is supposed to help you design tomorrow that you can piece from scripture literally. Are we together now? Like you use scriptures like the brushes of an artist upon a canvas and you start painting something that is not. Hmm, the character of faith, even God who quickened the dead and called the things that be not as though they were. So you are in your lowly estate and you begin to design with the spirit through the lens of scripture, the power of vision, seeing things as they are or as they should be, not as they are. From where thou art, lift up your eyes, he told Abraham, and look northward, southward, eastward, westward. And he says, as far as your eyes can see, not as far as your hand can reach, as far as your eyes can see, is someone learning now vision vision that is in line with god's will you see let me tell you this i told us yesterday 
the character of faith is that it does not just obtain everything you want it has to vet that your desires are consistent with the will of God because the assignment of the power of God is to bring to pass the will of God did you get that now the power of God does not walk outside of the jurisdiction of the will of God its assignment is to bring everything in conformity with the will of God so first John I think it's first John 5 first John 5 give it to us 14 and 15 very profound lesson on the will of God this is the confidence it says that we have in him that if we ask anything but that anything has jurisdictions according to his will he heareth us 15 it says and if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask then we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him one more time say vision I do not know anyone who is a champion of faith indeed that does not have at every given point in his life as an individual, as an organization, clear prophetic descriptions according to scripture of where you are trusting God to take you to. Do you notice that that was the one problem why Abraham could not believe God? The problem was vision. And one night God had to help him. He said, Abraham, come out. You are not able to believe the extent to which I want to make you a father of nations. And he said, let me walk with your imagination. Count the stars. He would start to count and then he would lose out. He would start to count and when he had stretched his mind, he says, so shall your seed be. Finally, the Bible says, Abraham believed God. The moment God introduced vision, Abraham now had the capacity to believe. It is difficult to believe God when you are blindly saying God will do it. We have all kinds of African wise sayings that stop us from doing daring things. I know one day God will do it. No form, no fashion. The first thing God dealt with was formlessness and the absence of fashion. Genesis 1 verse 1. The Bible says, now the earth was void and formless. The Hebrew word tohuwa bohu, it says God brought form. The spirit of God began to hover around the face of the waters. And the first thing God put in place was to take away formlessness. Hmm. Hallelujah. Right from when this ministry started, the ministry God had given me, when it started, I had certain pictures with God. And it did not make sense at that point. Are we together now? And I began to press, setting my gaze. Because you see, you will become what you focus on. That was the secret that Jacob used to command multiplication. He knew that this was a law that will work even for animals. Hmm. Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know according to Ephesians 3 and verse 20, you may have heard me say that both your mouth and your mind are prayer warriors and God answers their requests. Your mouth is a prayer warrior. Your mind is also a prayer warrior. And your mouth can be saying, God, lift me. And your mind, the bankruptcy of creativity says, God, don't take me serious. I'm not going anywhere. Hmm. Is someone learning? Vision. Bible faith that produces results, vision. At every point in my life, there are specific things I dream with God because dreaming up things that are outside of his will is wasting your time. You cannot secure his backing. This is why he left us scripture. So God is challenging someone. You cannot be audacious if you do not have a vision, a representation of the new you a representation of the new place that's why they went to spy the land when they spied the land it was to expand their mind they returned back and others gave very foolish the bible called it an evil report he was not even soft on the people a report that was inconsistent with god's will and expectation he called it evil joshua said and caleb let's go up at once we are well able is someone hearing now do you see the next level that God is taking you in ministry? Do you see the next level that God is taking you in your finances? As a man of God, do you see the next level of grace and glory and power? Do you see yourself moving across the nations? Let me tell you a story. When it was time to move down to Abuja and God began to speak to me, um, I began to pray and ask the Lord to direct me. At one time in the place of prayer, 
sir, the Lord asked me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. I would place all four of them at my prayer altar and pray like a madman. What was God doing to me? Let me tell you this, and I say it with all humility. One day in the place of prayer, I looked at the map of Abuja and it became small. It's something I cannot explain and I hope you don't take it for pride. It became small, very small. Honestly, very small. Something had happened to my faith. It became very small. Then one time, I looked at the map of the world for a long time. I wasn't praying, I was just staring at it. And I said, this is the whole world. What did Zuckerberg see that he believed you would not reject his product? What did Elon Musk see? They don't know you, yet they build their businesses upon the confidence that you cannot reject them. They don't know how the Yoruba culture works. They don't know how the Ashantis think. They don't care about your history, but they believe that they have such sense of dominion that they come up with an idea that it will, be, it will veto your cultural experience and you must embrace it, including the updates they bring. What guarantee did they receive? They, they did not respect the fact that you will change. They did not even seem to factor your will. They sat down from their rooms and saw the possibilities. Listen, if you believe what I'm teaching you, your life will be a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. When God sent us to go and have a conference in UK, among the many things, did you know, when we finally arrived at the auditorium, I saw the size and they told me that was the largest indoor center in the whole of the United Kingdom. Are you crazy as an African? It's not like you have a branch somewhere and it's not like you've been visiting the place frequently. But I know what it means to dream with God. Do not downplay the power of God when it comes upon a destiny that has vision. When you do not have vision, the power of God will keep hovering. What do you desire? I just desire to go forward. What does go forward mean? At what point will you know your prayer has been answered? A step is go forward. Are we together now? Yeah. Many of us desire to be audacious. Many of us desire to make giant strides in the spirit. But there is no definition for our expectation. Your expectation lacks definition. How do I know? Do you know one of the reasons why the healing ministry is very powerful? Because sickness has a definition and it has a name so it's easy to administer the power of god when people say i want to prosper it is very vague i want to prosper means what for someone i just want a condition better than where i am now and god will honor it for someone i want to have the capacity to have financial abundance for others i want the intelligence to design systems around my life that perpetuate wealth and bring continuity transgenerationally speaking that is their definition the moment listen it is in this area that both psychologists satan god and men agree that the mind has a cardinal role to play the moment you give definition form and fashion to things you see that now those who are not of faith will tell you that the universe will begin to cooperate with you and compel things to happen but we now know that that creative power is called the holy spirit it's true write your tomorrow on paper and watch yourself live in that reality this is why many people's prayer in africa becomes a waste of energy i say this sincerely i'm a man of prayer you see that but for the average person who is praying they pray making the mistake that is in acts chapter 12 because they were praying that peter should be released and they had no idea how the liberty looked like the bible says on account of their prayer an angel came oh brought peter out peter now came and knocked the door when they opened this was their answer they said no it's his angel they shut the door again and kept praying Peter had to knock and say, are you okay? What were you praying for then? How do you pray so much that your answer comes and you do not know? 
Learn this. After this service, you should come and thank your pastor. This is what happens in a conference. Vision. I learned this years ago. I would write before phones came out. I would put pieces of paper and write dreams and put it in my pocket. Bring it out and look at it. All right. I said, I'm going to buy a book. Total of 1,000 Naira. What do I have home and abroad? Five Naira. God is faithful. There is a vision. There is God. There's a willing hand to receive. Mysteriously, the power of God seems to honor vision. That when people put things on ground, if you are waiting until you have the resources, you will never do anything worthwhile. Did you hear what I said? If you are waiting, and by resources, I don't just mean money. For as long as there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Capacity increased the potential of the oil. There was nothing wrong with the oil. The oil had to remain assuming the shape of the vessel carrying it. Hallelujah. As for me, I made up my mind that there is no nation and there is no individual born of a woman that I will stand before and feel ashamed of myself. I will be inspired. I will be challenged, but not at the detriment of my self-worth. It was a vision I gave myself. And that vision will sponsor the energy to develop yourself. That even when men are clapping, God refers you back to the vision. And you see how far of that standard you are. And then you keep pressing. The reason why people settle down is because they never had a template. So anything higher than where you were looks like an, a place that is worth being called a destination. You would always hear me say it and I've told my people, compared to where God is taking us, we're only one step out of the cave. I was so blessed when the man of God came and was stretching the church and telling them that this was a manger to the next level. I pray and hope that you believe that. Hallelujah. When we started looking for land, for ministry, I have, I have, in my office the map of the whole abuja the whole abuja said bring it for i'm not talking of the summarized map map that is as long as a carpet fold it and place it there there is no body there's no body that says you cannot land originally belongs to god everybody met land and according to God's word, it says the increase of the earth is for all. And that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. That means there is a portion for everyone. God is a God of portions. Whether you step into your portion or not is your own concern. Believe what I'm telling you. Every one of you here, there is a portion for you. God is a God of portions. Are we together? But there are giants on every mountain don't forget so when you are drawing that map if you draw an empty one by faith that means you have you have found a way of dealing with those giants look at how those guys were sharing lands you read the bible you say these israelites were stubborn people they were allocating lands as if it was empty there were giants there imagine as a giant you are sleeping and they are sharing your land you this tribe here is your own this other one take this one this other one take ah uh, i think this land you can take this one they are giants but not a concern you take this i prophesy to someone here in the name of jesus every manifestation of mediocrity that has kept you small that you will not enlarge and do much for the kingdom may your faith be enlarged and expanded in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please sit down there are few campgrounds by the grace of god that have not visited in this nation campgrounds that belong to ministries have had the honor of ministering across almost every major denomination in this nation and when i go to visit i don't just go as a man of god i'm a man of god in the afternoon when all the protocol go when they all go back home i now become a wise student of destiny in the night i come out when everybody has gone to sleep and sometimes i walk around these campgrounds lord what did you show these people how did they believe who signed the register that members will come which bank gave them a guarantee that you just keep dreaming big i will come the signs follow they don't go before if you don't have a vision the signs will never follow you 
Hallelujah. Is God expanding you? Remember, we're doing part two now. This is the school of faith. Most people pray, but they pray without vision. Every time I study Acts chapter 12, I'm really very disturbed. How a corporate people came together, they were praying. I, I wish I would be taken in a vision to that scenery. Let me watch what they were saying. God, you are El Shaddai. Release Peter. We kept quiet and James died. We will not keep quiet over Peter. Do you agree? Yes. Oh yeah, pray. And then they began to pray. And the angel of the Lord came in response to that prayer. Brings Peter out. Oh, Peter is rejoicing. And then he knocks the door in the midst of hot prayer that is going on. He opens the door. The time to say, let's give thanks that he has arrived. They open and say, impossible. No, you can't. It can't be you. How did you leave the prison? No sound. We didn't close the door and say, let's keep praying. Vision. Vision helps you recognize your answer. Vision helps you recognize your answer vision helps you recognize your answer you need to know what your answer looks like what does it look like what does increase look like based on scripture what does progress look like based on scripture what does restoration look like based on scripture what does joy look like so when you sing and pray things like he's turned my morning into dancing my sorrow to joy what does sorrow look like and what does joy look like how do you know the difference i have to rush number three the school of faith jesus is someone learning so when you have an encounter with God, learning his integrity and his ability, number two is clearly defined expectations that are in line with the will of God. Can I give you number three? The third key to manifesting Bible faith according to scripture. Now, please listen. This is again an area where many sincere believers miss out in manifesting the, the faith equation. The third key is an understanding of the demands and the requirements to manifest their expectations an understanding of the demands the requirements listen carefully every faith process will always demand that you walk in partnership with the word of god there is always a role an understanding of the demands the requirements you must fulfill to commit god to perform you see this now many this is where with all due respect especially the charismatic circles most people believe that the moment you find what god has said it must come to pass no sir no sir no sir no sir midwife in prophecy and manifestation is a role that every responsible believer has to play there is always something you do as a commitment of your faith are we together you must know it first before you do it an understanding of the demands this is the assignment of meditation your meditation is not complete until your role in manifesting your expectation is revealed to you the purpose of meditation is not just to know what god can do but to find your place in committing god until your role is found your meditation is not complete are we together john chapter 2 and verse 5 we read the 11th verse earlier on but let's see what happened so now the wine is finished are we together the wine is finished and then the people there's no wine and they came to jesus and jesus said woman what i mean why have you brought it's not yet my time and she made a profound statement the mother saith unto the servants if it is a miracle you desire to see if it's the power of god you want to see there will always be something and he said make sure you listen because among the many things that will happen for water to turn to wine or for wine to be made manifest, there is something he will tell you. Whatsoever he saith unto you, not just hear it, not just recite it, he says do it. He says now that ye know these things, happy, blessed are you if you do them. Is someone learning and understanding? So there are many believers who stop at knowing what God can do. No doubt, 
and then sometimes they just fold themselves and say I know God will do it without knowing the participatory role they have to play you read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation the only exception were dead people and even among the people who were dead there were those who were alive that played a role of responsibility the only person who no man participated in bringing him alive was Jesus himself. Every other person who came back to life, watch this now, there was something that placed a demand. There was a demand. There was a demand. It was always in the presence of men that that resurrection happened. It was only Jesus. Are we together now? Who resurrected by the glory of the Father. No man played a role in his resurrection. Do you know what you need to do to produce that dimension of prosperity promise? That dimension of healing promise? So this is how it works. This is how it works. Lend me your attention. The, the kingdom is a compendium of limitless possibilities. But for every possibility in this kingdom, number one, there is a mystery that governs its manifestation. And within that mystery is a commitment. There is something the believer must do. Are we together? So you want to be healed, for instance. There is a mystery in the kingdom that releases the healing anointing. Are we together? In learning that mystery, you will always find the role you have to play. The key to being healed according to scripture is the hearing of faith. Every time healing is to happen, there first is the hearing of faith. And then you listen for spirit-inspired instructions. Upon acting on those instructions, even if you were among the ten lepers, the Bible says, as they went. As they went. Nine suddenly found out that healing happened. One returned back to be thankful and then he was made whole. So the person who does not have the patience to receive the hearing of faith will most likely not see miracles manifest. And the one who hears but is cold and not faith-filled to take steps. How do you see someone who has never walked and said, get up, pick your mat. It is a relatives, come and help him. You stand up by yourself, lame from birth. Pick up your mat and walk away. Many believers do not understand that there are demands. There are demands. There are times you will say, Lord, I want to rise to higher levels of finances. I want to rise to higher levels of grace. And whilst you are praying, now you have a revelation that God is able to do all things. El Shaddai, you have a clear vision. You see yourself lending to nations, blessing the program of God, you know, and so on and so forth, walking in abundance or in blessings or in the anointing, whatever it is that you desire. Then the next thing is to find out what is my commitment. For instance, Lord, I desire higher levels of spiritual power. Now you consult with the word because the word is the compendium of the wisdom of God. What are the keys in scripture that control the manifestation of superior levels of power? You can take a study on Jesus. He was never born with power. So what happened? What transited the ordinary carpenter's son? To become one who was filled with the spirit without measure you now begin to study those moments and you would see things that he did that even after his baptism you see the foundation for Jesus's ministry to become a person of power was he invested 18 years of his growth period learning the word that was where he started before the issue of anointing came into the scene from age 12 he started studying scripture it is written when he was filled with it is written by age 30 he now went to John submitting to authority are you seeing that now and then as wonderful as Jesus is and as powerful the son of God as he is and he was he walked under a, a close heaven it took a prophet to open his heavens now you are learning the keys that the word incarnate can still walk under a close heaven and when John prayed for him, the Holy Ghost came upon him and the Bible says Jesus went to the wilderness. So you are putting the keys together. The responsibility as a teenager of learning the word. Now when you want to be anointed, you see that timing matters in your paying attention to the things of God. Because it takes time to build capacity by the word. From age 12, even for Jesus, 
it took him 18 years to be prepared to receive that anointing the same formula he used for the disciples the ratio of teaching to impartation was three and a half years to one day many people reverse the process they have almost zero word and yet they have gallons of anointing oil i'm not being sarcastic now you you pour the oil on your head and you find out that it does not work that way it's the abundance of the word that qualifies you for the ministry of the spirit this is always the formula that produces the kind of anointing that produces results now jesus fasted jesus prayed you see that now so you take that responsibility in fasting and prayer and consecration building your spirit man when you walk in keeping with that truth but you see you have to know the rich young ruler came to jesus and said good master what must i do no wonder he was rich even though he was young i preach a teaching on that rich young ruler three things that are not easily combined to exist in the life of a man it takes time to be rich so when you find somebody who is rich and has an advantage of time young and is still ruler dominion respect that individual the bible does not give us his name but it summarizes the discipline of that man's life rich young ruler he had everything life could offer and when he heard that there was something jesus was proposing that he did not have he came to jesus and said good master what must i do i know that it will always demand me doing something i'm not here to say dash me eternal life what must i do i am ready to be responsible jesus said you are not far from the kingdom this guy you are you are close to this thing <laughs> an understanding are we learning now an understanding there's no time but just write them for reference Matthew 14 from 19 to 20 5,000 remember feeding the 5,000 you would think that in feeding the 5,000 because he was a mighty God automatically and magically the miracle would happen number one there was a young lad who needed to bring five loaf and two fish remember and the Bible says he broke it he blessed it then he gave the disciples the multiplication did not start with Jesus the multiplication started when the disciples took it and they started doing the distribution hallelujah we see a similar operation in John chapter 11 43 and 44 John 11 43 and 44 Lazarus now verse 43 tells us the miracle that happened when he had spoken he cried out with a loud voice and he said Lazarus come forth read 44 for me please let's read together ready one to read and he that was dead came forth but he was bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound with a napkin that does not look like a miracle though. that did not look like what mary requested for and he now said or oh, martha jesus said unto who here is your own role now take the responsibility i have brought life to him but lose him and let him go that means if he remains in that condition is no longer my issue i have brought him out from the grave but his advancement is your responsibility lose him lose him can mean teach him lose him can mean mentor him i have brought him to a church now lose him does not just mean remove the rope <clears throat> everything that ties men it is within the power of men to reveal the truth that lose men to let them go you can have people who are born again that's the type of coming out of the grave but their advancement in life don't just leave it to god god has the power to now he's given them that life but you must lose them he say you pastor you preacher you apostle lose them and let them go Is someone learning number four let me hurry up blessed be the name of the Lord is God blessing someone are you ready for number four the fourth key number one being a revelation of God's integrity and ability number two vision a clearly defined expectation number three an understanding of the demands and the requirements 
that commit God to perform. Number four, actions of obedience. The fourth key that fulfills the faith equation is taking actions of obedience. Matthew 14, 27 and 28. Please give it to us. Matthew 14, 27 and 28. My God. But straightway Jesus spoke and said, be of good cheer, it is I. Remember the storm when Jesus was walking on water? They saw him and they thought he was a ghost. And he said, if it be, if it be thou bid me come. And he says, come. 28, watch this now. Give us 28, please. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come on the water. And he said, come. And Peter got up. Do you know, if he had said, come, Peter would have known what he needed to do to walk on water. But knowing it was not enough. He needed to take the step of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no guarantees in life. A generation that has an appetite for guarantee will be losers perpetually. You will have to walk on water even if alone. You are going to have to trust God. Are we together now? Yes. Yesterday I shared with you my story about raising the dead. Make no mistakes. It's not like that again. I have grown. That was a story that happened years ago. But even the devil knows that my former self is not what he is here now again. Because every time you take actions, it is not about the results. It is about what it does to you. There's something called failing forward. When you are in a plane, watch this. If a plane is going forward and you get up from say seat 2 and you walk backward to use the restroom, based on what is happening inside the plane, you are going back. But based on the overall motion of the plane, are you going back? You are going forward. Even if you go to the last seat in the plane, with respect to the assessment of those in the plane, you've left your seat and you are going back. But the overall movement of the plane is taking you forward. Can I tell you, do you notice that in life, those who don't have time to mourn failure, they are the ones who, once one door closes, while you are crying, they force another one to open. They don't have the time for this sympathy. You see them banging at all kinds of doors. They force one to open. And that one that opens, they chain it and keep it open forever so that their children will come in, their children's children, whereas others are there trying to play everything safe, wanting guarantees. God, can you just put an uncle close to me so that if for any reason I fail, somebody life does not work that way an audacious generation must learn to trust God enough to take steps of faith and don't mind the naysayers who laugh at you, you see in church because of the presence of the Holy Spirit people assume that pragmatically speaking when you take steps in destiny it should be flawless victory all through and every time you record momentary failures here comes believers saying did you really hear God and you feel stupid for obeying God. I thought it was okay. I started the business. Now I've discovered that I started the real estate business. My first two deals, I was calmed. This went wrong and people said, go back. It's not God. If it's God, you must always succeed. Now ask the person who is talking like that how much he's had from that venture. It is the reason why most believers do not have intelligence as far as walking in the cosmos is concerned. There are times that you fail as an event not as the end product the conclusion of your journey and like you were told pain is a gift there is something called the gift of pain there is a lesson only pain can give you are we together we stand today upon our many failures that's what has given us the confidence run away from people who have never failed there is risk around your life there is a perspective about god and life they do not have and it will be dangerous to your growth. Even in terms of organizations, when, when real leaders who have been trained sit down and they are speaking to people, prospective people that they want to bring on board, they don't just want to hear of their strides. They want to know, have you failed before? Nobody insulted you before. No, I've, I've been a friend to everybody. You are a risk, not in this company. Because the first person who insults you, you will not, to learn that kind of lesson in this company, will, you will deflate our productivity. You need people who have built stamina. They have a balanced understanding on life. Is someone learning? Learn to take steps. 
a risk averse generation i'm not talking of careless steps you are guided by the word remember that you have vision the person who takes steps is the one who has vision and has discovered the responsibility component of, for his action you don't just act blindly but even at that that if you act and things don't work you go back you retreat you give jesus thanks because the one who arrives is listen the fact that you fail is proof that you are moving there are people who don't fail because they are never moving are we together now when you find someone in a traffic is because he had the courage to leave his house and then he got trapped in a traffic for a while and nobody just starts crying in a traffic they know no matter how long it will move there can be somebody waiting in his house and wondering and saying can you imagine i told you not to go anywhere and that person never arrives beware of people who do not have the courage to take steps you want to start a school here comes someone looking at you and saying you start a school i know your father's house i know where you are coming from you better sit down and don't embarrass yourself and you will watch your vision because visions are like rain whoever brings the bucket will receive it you will be surprised there are many people biting their fingers in anger because what god showed them he didn't show them alone the one who took action is the one who materialized it and the reward came to the one who took that step when God was speaking several things, there are people who had it. Notebooks that are full of several things but never took steps of faith. Yet others continue to build on their failure, reinventing themselves and sustaining the stamina to continue, motivating themselves and leaning only to the comfort of scripture until they emerged. Herein lies the fallacy. No great man comes out of nowhere. Just because you are not aware of the story does not mean there was no story. We live in a generation that has such disrespect for mastery and results. We just assume that because people have been anointed, they magically jumped a lot of process. My goodness, remove the shirt of any champion and see scars that will scare you. Don't the, the glamour of the palace sometimes can make it look like they were never in the wilderness. There are cups that you cannot pray away. You only receive grace to drink them. The disciples came to Jesus, the mother, and came to negotiate a position for her children left and right. And he said, the position is vacant, but can you drink of my cup and be baptized of my baptism? Action. Action. When God brought pastor here, I'm sure, Pastor Godwin said this place was a bush. Can you imagine that? Do you know that for every time you succeeded, you would have still failed it's only that when we see the other side of success it is so beautiful so we say things like you are lucky you are lucky show me a football team using pastor's example that has never failed even the greatest footballers have had to carry themselves in shame sometimes and walk out of the stadium and they go back reinventing themselves reinventing themselves reinventing themselves Jesus as the son of God went to certain places as a man of God laid hands on the sick and nothing happened he never said from this day I cease to be a son of God I'm embarrassed God should score 100 over 100 he left them in peace and went to continue his thing every time you fail cry with courage rise up with courage reinvent yourself with courage and know that God is faithful did you hear what I said? God is faithful. You have lost money in an investment. God is faithful. The time it takes to grumble and complain is the same time it takes to summon courage and continue. Remember, destiny is a function of time. Hallelujah. I know someone who once was building, and I think, um, was it that rain washed it or one story like that? And for a long time, one time, with all due respect, I had to tell him, I'm, you, I've heard this story before. Don't tell me again. Every time with me, you are making reference to this. Whereas from that time, while you were saying that story, someone was in primary five. This person went, graduated, and has built a house. Now, you have refused to build a house using the same energy to attract sympathy. My tears are expensive. I will not cry anyhow. I select the location not everybody deserves to see my tears I will cry before his presence but I will not waste my tears are you learning tonight 
you need to take steps of faith no matter what you receive from this conference no matter how powerful the impartation is that comes upon you on sunday ladies and gentlemen victory is at the other end of action the steps of obedience if it be thou bid me come now man go and wash yourself seven times in jordan mr man you are blind but summon the courage and invent a strategy to get to Siloam. Because if you do get there and wash your eyes, you will see. He would have been angry in offense and said, This person, I doubt if you are Jesus, the son of the living God. And remain there blind with mud in his eyes. The potential for miracles. I made up my mind that once God gives me the marching order, I will take the step. Let me fail in victory. Those who are not afraid of failure are those who win perpetually. Hallelujah. Perpetually, perpetually, perpetually. The first song I ever wrote in my life, one day I was thinking about it and I laughed. I said, my goodness, what kind of inspiration came to write that song? I mean, you. if I sing that song, I think it's nice, I hope it's nice. If I sing that song for you, you would ask me to go and ask God for forgiveness. That was the first song. I did my best. Wrote everything that I understood. Was a reflection of my revelation. Wrote all kinds of things. But if I stopped there and I said, yeah, no, this, this, this thing is terrible. Maybe for, listen, let me tell you this. Every time you fail, use it as a ladder. Climb higher climb higher through the, that failure and see higher and tell yourself the next time it will never happen this way again are we together have you seen a learner driving on the road he puts a big l and he's just swinging putting trafficator where there's no way he's not even aware that there's trafficator until someone says what are you doing with this and he tries to and you know wanting to press the brake and he's accelerating and everybody's clearing the way you are laughing at that person in one two years that person will be driving as far as here to lagos and he will be driving while he's doing other things and you will look at him and say how long have you been driving he said i just started last year whereas you've been afraid of the road for 10 years you got your driver's license 10 years but never had the courage to come out are we together yeah. someone went to farm and lost his crops because of a bad season and while others were crying he went back reinvented himself and started again and in the midst of that failure he now he now um, got connected to people who are into export at a very at a wholesale and changed his life whereas others were there blaming everything but them make up your mind say in the name of jesus shout it say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to take action I'm wrapping up. Say, I obtain grace, I obtain grace to take action. To take action. One more time. Say, I obtain grace, I obtain grace to, take action. to take action. What will they say? They will still talk if you fail. We talk about Jesus. We talk about Satan. Everybody in between will be talked about. So settle it once and for all. Whether you are Jesus, whether you are Satan, somebody will talk about you. Make up your mind to throw away this ego and all of that and start making giant constructive you see people never believe in you until they see the vision emerging then someone will say i knew you were going to be great they didn't know anything it's your courage and your faith you force doors to open in the name of jesus christ i like paul paul is in the prison and he's writing letters to people i hear you guys are misbehaving receive this letter first and wait for me i will come out of this prison and i will come out. what kind of a man was that this is someone who you would think he's not even sure if he should leave he's in the prison and he's saying i got word that you guys are doing this no no it ought not to be so you have allowed people to bring another gospel take this letter first and tell so 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 and so i'm i'm coming and truly he will come the guy refused to die died came back to life and said no way i'm not I'm not dying at the end of his life he said i've fought the good fight of faith i have finished the course 
you can weary failure you can weary naysayers the greatest way to respond to all of these things is to keep moving keep moving keep moving keep moving keep moving i always wondered how a snake that does not have obvious look at how men run away from snakes they would prefer running away from a snake than from a dog are we together or a cow that has horns the horns that can cheat you and yet we will prefer a cow than a snake what kind of attitude it crawls it looks slow looks sluggish but very visionary does not have the power to dig holes yet it can get into any hole drive whatever rat that is there and eat it in fact and go and stay there it becomes his habitation a serpent he said be wise as a serpent there are many lessons you can learn from a serpent a serpent looks like a hopeless creature anything can match it but you go near it no excuses whatsoever it doesn't give excuses i may not have hands i may not have feet I may not have other constructions that are an advantage in my body, but I will move anywhere. I will climb trees. I will climb through the fence. I will smuggle myself through a house. A snake can live with you for 10 years and you will not know. It is eating, eating the eggs of your chicken and you will not know. You know that? And it's not so fast. Come on. And when it's time to swallow, have you seen the things that snakes swallow? Watch your television. What kind of courage is that? When the antelope is dead, then it starts small. You will be laughing. You just keep watching. It starts to expand in a fearful way. Plus the horns, it will swallow it. Before it swallows it, it's already planned where to go and lie down for the next one year and not move. It will swallow that antelope, bones and everything. And they have survived. Yet there are men who have hands, they have feet, they have a mind that can think and they keep giving excuses. What if people say, in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to an audacious people, the grace that needs to come upon you, that you kill these excuses and begin to take giant steps. Receive that grace now in Jesus' name. Amen. Allow me to give you one last key and then we wrap up. Actions of obedience. Can I give you the last one? I consider the last one one of the most important keys. I do not want to end my session with you missing this. The last key that completes the faith equation is called patience and thanksgiving. Your faith equation is not complete until you have patience and thanksgiving. These are the components that give you the staying power because when all is said and done and your part is done, you will need patience and you will need thanksgiving. Patience is proof that you trust God, that he will come through for you. Thanksgiving is investing in advance, knowing that this is a God of integrity. Show me a man who has manifested faith perpetually, void of patience and void of thanksgiving. My Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience abraham father of nations you know how long he waited from the time god spoke not from the time his trouble started from the time god spoke jesus was patient to allow the fullness of time come for him to manifest as messiah hallelujah there are things that cannot be adjusted they are programmed already to seasons god will not fast track it he will only give you grace to go through it are we together yes it is nine months for a child nine women who are pregnant will not make nine months become one month you will have to wait it is nine months according to the time of life and Jesus grew you would think being the son of God there should be a supernatural way because the king's business requires haste in two years he should just grow into an adult and then the Bible says this is an exemption because he's the son of the living God but that did not happen 
he had to wait till he became a teenager according to the time of life went through the rudiments of the law for 18 years till he became 30 by the jewish calculation to be called a man to attain unto full masculinity then he began his ministry and for three and a half years when jesus died it had to be three days according to scripture and then he resurrected there are things you cannot change god grants you grace to go through them fear not he said i have redeemed you i have called you by name and you are mine it says when you pass through the waters i will be with you through the rivers it will not overwhelm you it says when you walk through the fire it never says run through the fire you walk through how do you walk through fire the speed has been programmed it is grace that is given to you are we together now yeah this is very important every man on earth is given 24 hours those who experience setbacks and those who increase god has never never given man the intelligence to invent a way of having more time wisdom gives you the ability to manipulate your 24 hours to multiply it into several hours there are people who have 300 hours in 24 hours but 24 hours is fixed and it will not change is someone learning this is very important you must learn to be thankful in ecclesiastes 3 and 11 very popular scripture that is largely misquoted the bible says he makes all things beautiful not in kjv says his time but it's an error in translation when you use the newer versions new king james nlt and the rest it says in its time because he's speaking in context that for everything there is a time and it is are we together a time for everything under the sun so he makes all things beautiful in its time it's time there is a time for it it's time and heir as long as he's a child different not from a slave even though he be lord of all are we together now yes he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance there is something called the season of appearance even for john the prophet there is the season of appearance right now is the time is getting close to the time of harvest for many people to reap from the seeds that they have sown somewhere early enough they started sowing by march april and now they are ready preparing getting to the final phases of the rainy season and ready for a bumper harvest others who were complaining and giving all kinds of excuses now they will have to live without any harvest because they did not sow patience can i tell you it takes time to know god it takes time to build wealth it takes time to build your faith it takes time to become a leader it takes time to surmount failure it takes time to encourage yourself in the lord it takes time you must learn to be patient we live in a world that wants to hurry everything and it is true that god gives speed you'll be receiving the grace for speed on sunday and the nature of speed is not hurrying you through the training is bringing an acceleration to first your yieldedness and then when the season of training comes to an end it is the manifestation that comes speedily and when the day of pentecost was fully come the suddenly was not the day the suddenly was a matter of time 50 days had to come it was the rushing of the spirit that came suddenly there are things that cannot be programmed suddenly there is no sudden wisdom it will take time there is no sudden growth the cheapest dimension of growth is biological growth every other kind of growth is painfully outsourced through patience intellectual growth spiritual growth and even that cheapest one requires time you will have to grow as a mother you will run away from a child you just give birth to a child and the doctors just wash the child bath the child and the child starts talking hello my mother i'm a child of god i came from heaven and i'm ready to start my life you will run away as courageous as you are because it is not consistent with the law of life hallelujah if 
a baby is well fed he does not become an adult he just becomes a properly nourished baby if an adult starves himself to death he will not die as a child he would die as a malnourished elderly man there are things that cannot change they are pegged to time we have to stop here so we pray the school of faith it's good to go to school hallelujah so let me do a recap bible faith is built upon these one a revelation of god's integrity and ability number two vision clearly defined expectations number three an understanding of the demands and the requirements to manifest the expectations number four actions of obedience and then in all your doings the staying power the ability to give thanks while you wait the ability to be patient knowing that haven't done all to stand he says stand are we ready to pray please rise up on your feet and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you yeah, we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you hallelujah can we take two minutes to pray just one prayer that you will pray and then i speak over you i like you to pray from the depth of your heart father I obtain grace to be audacious towards my life and destiny. I know that you are great, you are mighty, you are able. I shake away every limitation that has pegged me, every limitation that has tied me down in ministry, in destiny. Someone is praying. I obtain grace by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and pray. Invest a minute or two and just pray. You are speaking over your destiny here at this discovery conference in the name of Jesus Christ the grace to rise higher for the kingdom to do much for his majesty and for his glory my life will never be limited my life will never be pegged at a level in the name of Jesus Christ I have received the keys to manifest in Bible faith the faith that works, the faith that produces. Someone is praying. Just a minute, you are praying, stretching in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are out of time, but just lend me a minute. Place your hand if you are trusting God for healing. In any part of your body, you can stand in for your loved one. I just want to speak a word. We may not have time for testimonies and all of that. But just a minute to pray over the sick and then to join faith with all the servants of God here speaking over your life as I wrap up my session with you tonight. Go ahead, place your hand. We believe in a healing Jesus, the one who heals. Every time he gathers a people to himself, among the many things that he seeks that they experience is his power to heal to save to deliver and to lift father in the name of jesus i pray over your people here at this discovery conference i stand in faith and in agreement with every servant of the living god here and under this corporate anointing i speak to everyone who is sick in your body here on site and those following online in the name of jesus the son of the living god i bring you life I bring you healing Amen. now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I decree be made whole now. Amen. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity and Amen. I command it to leave your body. Amen. Terminal diseases be healed right now. Amen. Infirmities and yokes of all kinds and all sorts be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I join faith with the angel over this house and I prophesy over you in the name that is above all names the grace to rise to an elevated dimension in your life and destiny according to the word that the Lord gave the man of God the 99 days left between now and the end of December may that grace elevate you Amen. the courage to take giant steps of faith I release that grace upon you Amen. and for someone like the man of God preached you may have fallen things have gone down you may have failed many times the grace to arise receive it now in Jesus Amen. name I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that as you take giant steps of faith believing God for new things new horizons impossible dimensions may my God back you up Amen. may your life become a sign Amen. and a wonder let this be true for a pastor here. Amen. Let it be true for a businessman. Amen. Let it be true for a family man. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that represents shame and reproach in your life. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. I declare you are separated from it forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. By this time next year. Return ten times better. Amen. Return ten times better. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Would you lend me a minute to make an altar call? My sincere apologies for stretching your time, but it's usually my culture and I believe that is consistent with the belief in this ministry. Every time God gathers a people like this, there is always someone in the midst of God's people who needs to say yes to Jesus. Now listen to me. Salvation is beyond an initiation to become a Christian. It is a call to experience the life of God. Are we together now? And I do not want to assume that in the midst of these precious people inside, I believe others outside and the many following online, there has to be someone who, number one, is making a genuine decision and is saying, Apostle, while I listen to Pastor Godman, I listen to Pastor Godwin, and I listen to you, the Spirit of God began to convict me, telling me that the season the season to live in sin in backwardness in shame in defeat serving the devil and serving the flesh you must discern when that season is over and the bible says now is the accepted time for another person you may be saying i want to rededicate my life i remember and i recall once making this decision but as it is right now i cannot say in truth that I'm in right standing with the Lord. I want to give you that opportunity. I'm working on borrowed time, my apologies. I will count one to five. I need just one courageous person who will come to stand here and say, Apostle, I'm not ashamed. I know that I need Jesus and I do not want today to end without coming. I count one to five. May God bless someone who has the courage to come and stand here. I begin my counting. One, let's honor them as they come. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come, come, come to Jesus. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I have two more counts. Win that war of destiny once and for all. Don't sit back when the Spirit of God is convicting you. You know when He speaks. Look beyond the friends you came with. Look beyond your ego. Come to Him. He will give you rest. You can step into your Sabbath indeed. I salute all of you. Let's celebrate those who have taken the time and the courage to come here. Hallelujah. Now for those who are watching by way of television, here's an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. You're watching by internet. The Lord is giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. As I lead these precious ones in prayer, I'd like to request that you join and then you can let the church know that you just made Jesus Lord of your life. I believe that their social media handles are there for you to reach them. Just let them know that you've made Jesus Lord of your life. For those of you who are in front, thank you very much for the courage. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Please do say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, 
tonight I have heard your word I believe in you that you are the son of God right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King say I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep those beautiful hands lifted father thank you for these ones you have drawn them to yourself and scripture says as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away we agree with them that this begins a new experience for them and that they go from glory to glory grace to grace in Jesus name amen now here's what I want you to do for me ladies and gentlemen please I want you to follow the counselors there's a pastor who will be leading you they will just have a word or two with you and then you'll be back let's honor them as they go thank you thank you pastor Godwin thank you so much thank you his treasure house thank you so much for this opportunity may the Lord